Hey guys, today I'll be making a 2024 presidential election prediction between the current Vice President Kamala Harris and the former President Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been discussing that he may resume campaigning in the month of May, and this may be for a potential 2024 run as he and his campaign are discussing resuming his MAGA rallies, which are basically his campaign rallies, in this month of this year. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Donald Trump actually does that. And the selfie shows that he is, you know, trying to stay engaged in politics and is definitely considering a potential 2024 run for president. So if you look at the odds right now for the Democratic nomination, Kamala Harris is the front runner on top of Joe Biden. She has been above Joe Biden in terms of the chances for a very long time. However, they have been very close at around 40 cents each for a very, very long time. They're really only followed by people. Pete Buttigieg and AOC. These three are just too old to run. Uh, so really, the Democratic field is basically just the president and the vice president. But Kamala Harris, I think, definitely is considered the lesser of the two candidates between herself and Joe Biden. For the GOP, Donald Trump brought his hand his neck and neck, uh, well ahead of Nikki Haley, Ted Cruz, Mike Pence, and Christine Nome. So before we get started, make sure you join my Discord server if you have not. The link to which is at the very top of the description below. We have a pretty cool mock government on there, so make sure you join that if you have not. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for Kamala Harris. Uh, now for Kamala Harris, uh, I'm not going to give her Colorado as a solid state. I do not think she'll do as well as Joe Biden in those states. New Mexico as well. Uh, for Joe Biden, it, depending on the candidate, I would give Colorado as a solid state for Joe Biden. In 2020, he won it by 13.5%. As you can see, the website is updated, so there's now this little bars, which is pretty cool. But Joe Biden only won Colorado by 13.5%, not 15%. But if you look at 2016 numbers, it was Clinton plus 4.9%. So it was almost, uh, it was basically an eight point shift to the left when Joe Biden run uh, ran in 2020, almost nine points even. So for Kamala Harris, I don't think that she can continue off of that big uh, increase that Joe Biden saw in 2020. So that's why I'm going to put Colorado and New Mexico as likely in a, in a couple of moments here. But with these solid states out of the way, this gives Kamala Harris 180 electoral votes. And then for Donald Trump, he has quite a few. I will give him Montana, uh, states like that, as solid for him in this scenario. I do think he'll be able to do well there. The first district of Nebraska as well, he won this by 14.9% in 2020. So just barely a likely margin in the first district of Nebraska. But in 2024 against Kamala Harris, I'm confident that he can get over that 15% mark. However, I do think Kamala Harris will do a little bit better in the south. States like Mississippi, I think will actually be likely for the former president so uh, but I do think that he will win Indiana by a solid margin whether or not Mike Pence is on the ticket Indiana is getting redder and redder uh, against Joe Biden it could definitely go down because Mike Pence is no longer on the ticket they only won this by 16% with Pence as the VP but 2024 with Kamala Harris as the opponent I do think Trump can pull off a very narrow solid victory in the state of Indiana so this gives Donald Trump 90 electoral votes from his solid state to Kamala Harris with 180 electoral votes Votes. So I'm I'm going to fill in the likely states for Donald Trump now. So starting off with the states of Kansas and Missouri. In 2020, uh, only Kansas was likely for Donald Trump, 14.7%. Missouri was a margin of 15.4% for Donald Trump. But these two states have not been trending the best for the Republican Party. I mean, uh, Kansas has not gone to a Democrat in decades. Uh, I believe almost a century. It's been a very, very long time since Kansas has gone to a Democrat on the presidential level. Missouri, you used to be a bellwether state. It's gotten a lot more red. However, recently it is getting a moderately more blue. Uh, however, that's not, you know, too quickly. But for Donald Trump, 15.4% in 2020, 2024, the margin can definitely go down as the more rural areas, they are becoming more and more blue again. Uh, but this would put Trump over 100 electoral votes. I also do have him winning Mississippi with a likely margin. Uh, Kamala Harris being the first African-American candidate, um, I think, or not first, but second African-American candidate, I think would may be a... Um, you know, would make a difference in this race, especially in the South for Kamala Harris. She would, she would be the second African-American candidate for a major party and the second woman as well, and the first African-American woman to be on top of a presidential ticket. So this would give Donald Trump 112. South Carolina as well. Uh, 2020 wasn't the best for Donald Trump here, but it's likely to not you know, be too much worse in 2024 uh, for Trump in the state of South Carolina. I also have the state of Alaska, which would be another three electoral votes 
for Donald Trump. So this is basically the more uh, the states that you typically expect would go to Donald Trump. I mean, all these states have a very uh, strong Republican past. They've gone to Republicans in the last couple of elections. And the same thing for these Democratic states. Now, there are two likely states that uh, have only recently joined this list, and those are the states of Iowa and Ohio. Two states I think definitely will be likely for Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential election, especially against Kamala Harris. I do not think Kamala Harris is the best candidate for the South here. So taking a look at the voting history in the states of Ohio and Iowa. So in 2012, these were both Obama states. 2008, let's look back a little bit more. In 2008, Iowa was 9.5% for Barack Obama. Ohio was 4.6%. 2012, Obama did worse in both of these two states. However, nobody expected that in 2016, Iowa would be 9.4% for Donald Trump and Ohio would be 8.1%. It was expected to be very, very close. Clinton was not doing you know, this badly in the polls, but Donald Trump came out and won a huge victory in both Iowa and Ohio. 2020, Joe Biden was expected to do better. He was actually leading the polls in both these states You know, at the very, very end, just days before the election. Joe Biden was leading in the polls, but he still lost both these states by basically the same margin. Iowa went down one point. In Ohio, the margin went, went down nothing. Thing. The margin was essentially the same. Uh, Biden won more votes, but the Trump won even more votes uh, compared to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in 2016. Now, if you want to look like a little bit more, 2004, both these states went red. So they were um, pretty uh, fluid in terms of how they voted. Obama definitely did very, very well here, especially the Rust Belt in general. I mean, he won Michigan by 16.5%. He won Michigan by a larger margin than Colorado. Uh, Barack Obama in 2008. I mean, he won North Carolina. He won Florida. He won, I mean, West Virginia only went to John McCain by 13.1% in 2008. So really, um, Barack Obama was, you know, that once in a lifetime candidate. Uh, but in 2024, it's very, very unlikely that Kamala Harris is any better than Joe Biden in both of these states. So the likely states and solid states for Donald Trump gives him 147 electoral votes and 148. I do have him winning the second district of Maine with a likely margin. Now, for the vice president of the United States, like I said, Colorado, New Mexico are going to be likely for her. Uh, they were likely for both Joe Biden and um, Hillary Clinton in 2016. As you can see, 4.9% and 8.2%. So likely meaning 7 to 15 percentage points and then solid, of course, 15 plus. And there's also lean, which is 2 to 7. And then tilt is anything less than 2%. So Kamala Harris, 195 electoral votes. The at-large vote in Maine is also expected to be likely. That's what it's been for uh, a little bit. Now, 2016, it was actually lean for Hillary Clinton, but uh, or not not lean. It was actually um, still no, no. Yes, yeah, so it it was lean for Hillary Clinton, 2.9 percent. But 2020, Joe Biden has bought it up. But Hillary Clinton was a notoriously bad candidate in the Northeast here. You know, these solid Democratic states. Uh, Hillary Clinton really did underperform in many of these states. I mean, Massachusetts only won 26 percent, as you saw earlier. Joe Biden won Massachusetts by 33 percent. Connecticut was likely. New Jersey and Delaware were both likely states under Hillary Clinton. Uh, if you look back a little bit more, I mean, Barack Obama won this by 15 percentage points. So. Uh, I think it's going to be around that likely margin for Kamala Harris, giving him one, giving her 197. Uh, I also do have one more, and that is the state of Virginia, 13 electoral votes. Uh, 2016, this was won by Hillary Clinton, won it by 5.3%, but this state is a state that's getting bluer and bluer. It's essentially from the northern area of Virginia, around the D.C. area in Maryland. Uh, that's where it's really getting blue, because this state, I mean, this was this state was where the capital of, con of the Confederacy was. I mean, this used to be, uh, you know, just like any other southern state but virginia now is becoming more of a northern state and then 2020 joe biden won it by 10.1 percent very strong strong victory for him so i do have virginia as a likely state so the likely and solid states for kamala harris gives her 210 electoral votes to donald trump with 148. Now, next, I do want to take a look at the lean states. And before we do that, I want to take a look at the popularities of both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. As of right now, Kamala Harris's favorability is 5.7%. Uh, definitely not the greatest, much worse than Joe Biden's, who is over 10% right now in terms of his favorability. As you can see, 49.5 to 43.8% for Kamala Harris. She is not at a majority in terms of Americans that view her favorably. Uh, but definitely compared to Donald Trump, this is much 
stronger. This is also much stronger than Hillary Clinton's favorability when she ran in 2016. Hillary Clinton was very much in the negative, just like Donald Trump. So this is so positive. And Kamala Harris, with the exception of Joe Biden, Kamala Harris is still much more popular than Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, all those major political leaders. Kamala Harris is still popular, but definitely not as popular as Joe Biden. Uh, for Donald Trump, as you can see, negative 16.9%. Uh, even for Donald Trump, these are not the greatest numbers. He's been at much better numbers in the past. Um, at one point, he was even at uh, negative 6.8% in the unfavorables. Uh, but right Right now, he's at 16.7, uh, which he has been at for quite a bit. He's more unpopular now than he was uh, during the 2020 presidential election. Uh, so yeah, that definitely says a lot about Trump's popularity. It has not improved after he has left office. He has a 38.3% favorability rating, which for Donald Trump, that really is very, very low. An unfavorable 55%, which is all right. So uh, definitely their favorabilities are not the greatest, not as you know great as Joe Biden's, of course, but Kamala Harris uh, still definitely much better better than Donald Trump, and that will definitely help her in an election. So for the lean state, starting off, I have Texas and Florida for Donald Trump. Now, the reason why, I mean, Texas is probably going to stay a lean margin. I don't expect it to go over 7% again. Donald Trump has not been good for the state, and you do have um, the possibility of better work running against Ted Cruz in 2024, which could definitely boost the Democratic Party there. 5.6% uh, for Donald Trump in 2020. 2016, it was 9%. 2012 is a margin of 16% for Mitt Romney. So this will be definitely a strong victory for Donald Trump in the state of Texas. Uh, not, not a strong victory, but a definite victory. It's only he loses the state, but definitely the victory of, you know, the margin of victory is not going to be as great as it has been for Republicans in the past. Florida as well, he's been able to do very well there uh, in the state of Florida, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, whether or not he can hold on to that lean margin. You know, in 2020, he was able to win this state by a margin of, uh, in 2020, he was able to win it by 3.4%, which was a big increase off of his 1.2% margin. I mean, Florida was really the only only state that Donald Trump did better in in 2020. The only other state that Trump did better in was the state of Hawaii, I believe. So really, Florida was one of the only places where Donald Trump actually did better in the 2020 presidential election compared to 2016. And I think that trend will continue in 2024. In Florida, I do I think I do think will become less and less of a lean state or a toss up state because the state does favor Republicans definitely and has been uh, since the Obama era. So. This puts Trump over to Kamala Harris now with 220 electoral votes. And that's essentially all the lean states that I have for Donald Trump right now. For Kamala Harris, I have Minnesota as well as New Hampshire. I mean, these two, I mean, these two states, they have been uh, Democratic for a while now. New Hampshire, I would say, is like Florida. Uh, it's a little bit of a toss-up. Republicans can, can definitely win there. Uh, as you saw in 2016, Clinton won the state by less than 1%, 0.37%. But the state definitely does have a very strong Democratic tilt and very strong Democratic bias just in general. Uh, so Republicans can win, but it's definitely much, much harder. And Minnesota has the longest Democratic voting streak in the country for a state. It's the only state that voted for Walter Mondale in 1984. It's the only one that did not go to Ronald Reagan, who is, of course, a Republican, uh, which is why it has the longest Democratic voting streak, uh, has been blue since the Carter era and before that. So uh, this puts uh, Kamala Harris now over Donald Trump. And I do have one more lean state on this map, and that is the state of Georgia. I do think Kamala Harris can do very well in the South. And yes, her being black, I think, will definitely help her. Uh, you know, her being black, I think, won't help her in Florida because you know, many people People in Florida, especially the Cuban population, wanted um, you know someone that was more like them to be chosen. Someone like Julian Castro or someone like that, Cory Booker. You know, just you know, not not Cory Booker, but someone uh, who represented them a little bit more. Uh, the Latino population in the country. Uh, so definitely Kamala Harris, I don't think will do as well in Florida, but you know, demographically he'll, she'll do much better in Georgia, which I do think will be lead. And that's really the only uh, last lean state on this map. So. In terms of the tilt states, I have North Carolina as a tilt state for Donald Trump. I do think he'll be able to hold on to it, although Barack Obama did win it in 2008. The Democrats have been not been doing so well. 2012-2016, uh, mediocre margins for the GOP, but 2020 was 1.3%. Uh, Kamala Harris can probably keep it, you know. 
with her being a person of color. Uh, she can probably drive out more African-American turnout, but it's still not going to be enough, I don't think, for her to actually fool up the state. She is still a much weaker candidate than Joe Biden. And also have Donald Trump winning in the state of Wisconsin, uh, giving her, him 10 more electoral votes. So the state of Wisconsin, uh, the problem here for Kamala Harris is that Joe Biden barely fooled up the state. Joe Biden did not do well in Wisconsin. I mean, he was expected to win the state by 9% according to the polls. He won it by 0.63%. I mean, 2016, Trump won it by 0. 0.76. Of course, it was a very slight flip, but Donald Trump does very well in the Rust Belt. I mean, in 2008, uh, I mean, 2012, this was 6.8% for Barack Obama. 2008, it was 13.9%. So it's really Donald Trump that does well in the Rust Belt. If you look at the Senate level here as well, Democrats, Gary Peters even won in Michigan in 2020. 2016, uh, the Republicans were able to do well here, uh, riding the support that Donald Trump had in the Rust Belt. But 2018, the Democrats won all three of these states uh, by pretty big margins. But, you know, those were pretty popular Democratic incumbents there. Um, but the Democratic Party does still have a little bit of a stronger hold here. But Wisconsin, definitely, it's much weaker for them. And that's why I think Donald Trump will be able to flip Wisconsin. For Kamala Harris, Nevada, Arizona, I have both of those states as tilt states for the vice president of the United States. Uh, Arizona, Biden did win it in 2020. It's a little bit different than Florida in terms of how the Latino populations vote. Uh, the, the one in Arizona is definitely a lot more liberal, uh, but the one in Florida is a lot more conservative because, uh, you know, Cuba, you know, Cubans... Uh, you know, Cuba is a socialist communist country, and so uh, that doesn't really rub off too well with, you know, the Democrats now painted as the socialist party, the communists. Uh, but in Arizona, it's definitely a lot different there. Uh, Nevada as well, I think that the margins are going to be relatively weak for Kamala Harris, but still a win in both of these states nonetheless. And I also have her winning in Michigan and Pennsylvania, although by very, very narrow margins. I do expect these states to be very, very close uh, between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Yeah, Trump could definitely still win these states, but Right now, I do think that Kamala Harris does have a better chance. They did win it in 2020, Biden 2.8 in Michigan, Pennsylvania 1.2 for Joe Biden. I don't think it'll be uh, too much of a change, but let's look at Kamala Harris at 291. And then finally, the second district of Nebraska is tilt as well. So this would give Kamala Harris 292 electoral votes to 246. Now, this is a little bit different because there is redistricting occurring, and this is just a projected map. So why PMS has not actually updated the electoral vote numbers because Texas will get 40 electoral votes, not 41. So if you look at the actual numbers here, this is the change. So really, there was not too much of a change in terms of electoral votes, as you can see here. Um, you know, these, uh, you know, these states, basically, it's plus one in most of these areas uh, right in the south. Um, yeah, the, you know, the Sun Belt, basically. Uh, California will lose one electoral vote. Uh, Texas will lose two, or uh, only gain two electoral votes, not three. That was what was previously expected uh, in a Florida plus one. So basically, after these numbers, you will get the actual map 293 for the Democratic Party to 245 for the GOP. So it's off by one electoral vote, which isn't too big of a deal. So this will give the Democrats 293, the Republicans 204 electoral votes. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to join my Discord server if you have not. Link at the top of the description below. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. Like this video and join it. Comment down below who you think would win between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.